Hi everybody and welcome. My name is Luke and this is The Science Lens where I show you how science can improve your critical thinking skills. Today I'm going to talk about why misinformation persists in our memory even after we learn that it's false. I'll start with a personal example and then explain why it happens and end with some advice on how you can overcome it. Okay, let's get started. When I was a kid, I would often hear people talking about how MSG was bad for your health. Restaurants would promote the fact that their food was MSG free, and there was even a PR battle between Campbell's and Progresso over who used the most MSG in their soups. So I was surprised when back in 2019, I overheard an episode of This American Life that said the whole idea of MSG being bad for you was a complete myth. So I made a mental note of the fact and went on with my life. But then about a year or so later, I was at a friend's place for dinner and he put a shaker full of MSG on the table. And my first thought was, oh man, that is so bad for you. Even though I knew that it wasn't. This is called the continued influence effect. The continued influence effect is when misinformation continues to exist in a person's memory even after they've learned that it's false. Now, there's a range of reasons why this could occur. It could be because the information conflicts with the person's worldview, or they've succumbed to a logical fallacy, or because of their emotional state when they heard both pieces of information. But the way memory works also plays a role. So for example, imagine you read a news story that said that eating apples is bad for your brain. Then the next day the news outlet prints a retraction saying that their site had been, I don't know, hacked by an angry pear farmer or something like that. You now have two memories in your mind. One that apples are bad for your brain and that the story about apples being bad for your brain is wrong. Later on, when you go to grab a snack from the fruit bowl, you might recall both of those memories or you might only recall the one about apples being bad for your brain. In which case you're believing misinformation even though you're aware that it's false. Now, there are a few reasons why memories of misinformation can stand out more than the correction. It could be that the misinformation made a person feel angry or afraid. It could be that they've just heard that misinformation so many times that it's become ingrained. The unfortunate truth about memory is that it's not perfect, but there are things that we can do to make it better. Before I continue, I just wanted to make a small request that if you're enjoying the video so far, please click the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like it. Okay, continuing on. So what can science tell us about the best way to overcome the continued influence effect? Well, the answer is different before, during, and after encountering misinformation. There have been a lot of studies into the effect of something called pre-bunking. People are much less likely to believe misinformation if they hear the correct information first. It's kind of like a vaccine that protects your brain against fake news. So when scientists start to see a particular myth go viral, they try to get ahead of it by posting correct information as much as possible. This means that if you ever see an article from a reliable source that's aiming to discredit misinformation, it's a good idea to read it and share it. Now, knowing which sources are reliable isn't always easy. So to learn about that topic, I recommend that you watch my interview with journalism teacher Jen Stevens, linked above. Learn about your biases. Nobody likes to think of themselves as biased, but we're all susceptible to them. However, if you're aware of some common cognitive biases, you'll learn to recognize them in yourself and they'll be less likely to trick you into believing misinformation. I also have a video on that topic, so you should check that out. Now, when you encounter misinformation, the best thing you can do is fact check. When we encounter misinformation, we can't erase the memory of it from our brain, but we can try to make correct information more prominent in our mind. The best way to do that is to gather reliable information from trusted sources. The more information, the better, because it'll help consolidate the memory. As well as that, a study published in the British Journal of Psychology also showed that correcting misinformation is easier one day after reading it than one week after reading it. So if you encounter something online that seems a little fishy to you, it's best to fact check it as soon as you can. Be prepared to update your knowledge. Changing our minds about something can be really uncomfortable, especially if we've held a piece of knowledge for years or if it forms part of our worldview. So when presented with conflicting information, the temptation can be to just disregard it. But as critical thinkers, we should base our knowledge on data and logic. So when new information presents itself, we should be adaptable. The causes of the continued influence effect are many and varied, so it's impossible to prevent all misinformation from affecting our decisions. But by staying vigilant about misinformation and understanding the quirks of our brains, we can help to make sure our knowledge is based on correct information and not just a persistent memory. Well, that's it from me for today. I'm going to go eat some Chinese food and Parmesan cheese because MSG is awesome. But if you'd like some resources to help you practice the concepts that I covered, I recommend that you check out my store on TPT. 
There I have a range of worksheets and templates for teaching critical thinking in the science classroom, and you can find a link to those down in the description below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. And finally, I used a bunch of resources to help me put this video together today, including a review article in Nature that was particularly helpful. So I recommend that you check those out if you'd like more information. They're also linked down in the description below. For now though, that's it from me. Thanks for watching.